If you're new to asking for support, letting him in, creating opportunities for him to step up as a partner, then chances are you've had a lot more experience doing these things that you're now letting him own, which means you know what not to do, the faster way to do things, the more efficient way to do things, especially with kids. As long as the end goal is met, you let him figure it out on his own. You are not trying to be a micromanager. Let him stumble, let him learn, let him figure out a way that works best for him. Welcome to the Marriage and Motherhood Podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Perda. As a marriage coach who's married with three kids, I know how easy it is for marriage to take a back seat. But unlike your parents' marriage, your marriage can feel good while raising kids and doesn't have to feel hard. It can look like having each other's backs, even flirting and looking forward to spending time with each other. And I'm here to help you. So join me here each week as we dive into what it takes for your marriage to become something you enjoy again, from how to handle conflict better and bringing that spark back into your relationship. If you're ready for your marriage to feel good again, this podcast is for you. Let's dive in. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Marriage and Motherhood Podcast. I am super excited to talk about this topic because this is something that a lot of people have been asking about, and that's how to get more support at home from your husband. I am, just to share like my full stance, I am anti-martyrdom, okay? I live with someone who did that. That's not my cup of tea. I don't want this for you. It's not sustainable. It's not good for your marriage. And so... I wanted to come on here and talk about how you can get away from that, even though you might be doing it unintentionally, but get away from that and actually start to feel like the partnership in your marriage is actually a true partnership. So I'm going to share how to get more support at home from your husband. Okay. What you saw for your marriage is what I want to help you create. Even if it seems like you are very far from that right now, ever since having kids, right? That's what I hear a lot. That's what I've personally experienced after having kids, things in the marriage get harder, okay? And I wanna help set you up to know that there's stuff that you can do to help that. There are things that you can do to change that for yourself so that you can enjoy your marriage again, so that you are fighting less and spending way more time actually enjoying being, okay? Imagine that. That's incredible, right? And that's what I want for you. I have helped my clients take their marriage from arguing all the time, feeling like they are not on the same page, the wife feeling very unsupported, the husband just feeling like, where did my wife go? She's now this serious person who isn't so fun anymore to completely doing a 180 to the point where the wife is able to be flirty and have fun and enjoy time with their husband, dropping the resentment feeling like communication feels so much easier and the husband feeling like they are now a team, that they are able to do life together and that it's fun again. And that's what I want for you as well. Okay. So why do we need support? When we think about how things were in previous generations, maybe even like one or two generations before life is different now, right? Yes. Maybe your mom, maybe your grandma, maybe both were homemakers. Maybe they did everything with a smile on their face. They took care of the home, they took care of the kids, and they always had a hot plate of food ready for a husband when they got home. And now you're wondering, why am I so tired? And why do I need support? Why can't I be like them? Why can't I do it and still be that present mom? Truth is, is that there is a shit ton of things to do all of the time. Life is just busier right now, okay? The demands on parents have grown ever since all the conveniences of technology have been created, like our phone, like TVs, like the radio, like the internet, right? We now know everything that is available to us and everything is so accessible and people are constantly sharing on social media about what they're doing and how they're taking care of their kids and the things that they're putting their kids into, right? We are now seeing it all and we are putting these high expectations on ourselves to give our kids the best of the best, 
right? They've got to be in a million activities. We've got to enrich their brains, engage their athleticism, their social life. We are trying to curate this perfect childhood that we may not have gotten, but that we want for our kids. We have less help available to us right now because we don't live in a village where we have people constantly available to support us. That's just not our reality right now. It takes planning to get the support that we need. And even then, people are busy with their own lives because there's so much available to us. There's all those things that we can do in a moment's notice. And we've got women who are working, taking care of the home, and being the default parent. And this is just simply not sustainable. We've got to stop being like our moms, like our grandmas, like super moms, okay? And you shouldn't feel bad for wanting more support. It's not your job to do it all. And yet, society paints this picture that it is. So it kind of feels conflicting, like I'm not doing enough, but yet I'm also feeling too tired to do it all, and I want help. Martyrdom is a thing. I grew up with a mom who felt like she had to do it all, because that's exactly how she was raised. She had to do all the cleaning, all the cooking, and so when she had my sister and I, she's like, I'm going to do it all because I want you to have a different childhood. Then what kind of mom did we get? She was always tired. She was always stressed out. And I'm betting that this is not the version of you that you want for your family, for your husband, right? And then there's the generational beliefs that get carried on on what a wife's duties are, right? What are a wife's duties? Have you ever thought to question that, right? What makes a good wife? What is a wife supposed to do? Everybody has a different idea on what that is. In fact, um, maybe like a couple days ago, I was watching Married at First Sight and one of the wives on this particular season said, I just want to be a wife. I just want to be a really good wife and do my wifely duties. And she started spouting out all these things that she thought fulfilled her role as a wife. And that looked like keeping the house clean, having a hot meal, waiting for her husband when he gets home, and, and so on and so forth. And if you do that and you love it, cool. But that's not necessarily wifely duties. That's just you and the way you want to love your partner, how you want to show up for them, okay? It's your love language, acts of service, right? But that doesn't mean that under your job description of a wife, of a mom, that you have all these things to do and that your husband's only job is to bring home money, okay? Because moms and wives do that too, right? We bring home money as well. And not to say that if you are a stay-at-home mom, that your time is less valuable or less productive than those who are out working. No, all time spent doing stuff is the same, okay? It's both draining. Going out to work is draining, staying at home is draining, okay? So I want you to pause and ask yourself, what do I think a wife does? What makes a good wife? What are the beliefs that I have learned and seen over time in my childhood up until this point? How is that affecting my belief of what a wife does, okay? And when we don't feel supported, how we end up feeling is we feel burned out because like, hello, we're doing all the things, right? We feel resentment, feeling like you have yet another child to take care of and pick up after instead of a partner who's doing life with you and making life easier and contributing to how the household runs, right? Then there's a loss of connection because you feel that resentment. Resentment is the number one connection killer in your relationship. And then naturally, there's a communication breakdown, right? When communication is breaking down, that's a sign that connection is lacking. The foundation of the relationship is going downhill, okay? Now, let's get into why he might not be helping, okay? He might not be helping because he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't feel confident about doing what's needed to be done. He grew up with traditional gender roles at home, and he believes that his job, his contribution, his responsibilities lie elsewhere. And the times that he has helped, 
maybe he's been criticized for how he does it, whether it's by you, previous partners, his parents. Okay. Here's the thing though, out of all the things that I listed, none of it is because he's intentionally trying to be not helpful. Okay. None of it. He can not be helpful and not be doing it on purpose. Both can be true. Okay. Why? Because he probably doesn't realize how much help you need, how much you need the help. And all he's got are his own experience, just like how you have your own experiences and your own beliefs based on your upbringing and what you've seen and the circles that you run in and how relationships work in those circles, right? And he may be leaning on those beliefs and experiences to guide him on how to be a husband and how to be a father, okay? Is this his fault? Not necessarily, right? This is just where he's coming from. This is his baseline. And I think we need to come to our partners and meet them where they're at. You just have very different ideas growing up on how this works. Is it something that's going to leave your marriage doomed? No. It just means that you guys need to get on the same page and work together as partners to sort it out, okay? So if you're hearing excuses from him like, oh, I'm tired or I'm busy, those can also be true and he can still be the partner that you need, just like how you oftentimes are tired, right? And you're busy, but what do you do? You suck it up for the greater good and you do what needs to be done. He can do that as well, okay? So what if he's tired? You can still communicate what it is that you need. And he can decide whether he wants to step up and be the partner that you need, that your marriage needs, okay? So here's how to get more support from him so that he's taking more of an active role and taking more initiative at home, okay? Number one is be more direct. I cannot tell you how often I've had clients tell me, the women, I am always saying things, but then when I ask them specifically what they're saying, it's not actually direct. It sounds more like venting and complaining. And I can understand how their husband can be like, I didn't realize you were actually saying you wanted me to do stuff. I just thought that you were just complaining and you would get over it because normally after you say that, you go and do the thing and everything is fine, right? So you've got to be more direct. You might be sharing how tired you are and how much there is to do and how much there is that's going on and how you wish people would help out more and how you are the only one that does everything. You might be saying all of these things, but they're not actual direct requests to your spouse. You're not directly saying, hey, can you do this? Hey, I need you to do this, right? And so one way you can do this is you can say, hey, I feel really drained and exhausted lately by the end of the day. And I'd like to feel like I have the energy to do what I would like to do once the kids are down and spend some time with you and be a couple again instead of wanting to just immediately get ready for bed, go to bed, zone out on my own, and then rinse and repeat. So you can ask him, when would be a good time for us to sit down and figure out what could be a better way to go about this as a team? Because the way things are going right now, it's not sustainable for me. And I don't want to become resentful towards you, or I don't want to continue feeling resentful towards you. So what can we do about this? When's a good time for us to talk? Never force your partner to talk right away. Remember, you might have been mulling over this for a really long time, but this is new to him. And so he's going to need time to like process and prepare because otherwise he's going to feel like he's just going to be ambushed during the conversation. And, and nobody likes to feel like that, right? And plus he might have his own emotions that he's going to have to process. And you want someone who's ready and willing to participate in the conversation rather than someone who is feeling emotional and reactive and it's not going to be a good conversation, okay? You want a productive conversation. Another option is if you don't mind managing your husband, some people don't, right? Directly tell him, hey, can you start emptying the dishwasher from now on? Tell him exactly how he can contribute. The caveat here is that you've got to let him own it, right? That means no hovering, no critiquing, no nothing, none of that, okay? 
if this is something that you struggle with, you being more direct, you feeling confident to be more direct and bringing these issues to him, then I have a workbook for you that will help you feel more confident when handling topics that can end up. I will share the link. The next thing, be more honest. When he asks how he can help, give him something to do. Okay. Don't tell him, Oh, I've got it. Oh, I'm fine. It's okay. Go relax. You know, whatever. You will not win a badge of honor or a trophy for doing more. Okay. This is not a competition on how little help can I get? How much can I do on my own? This doesn't make you any less of a mom, any less of a wife for getting support. Okay. If you want him to be a partner, then you've got to give him an opportunity to be a partner. Yes, it may take time to think about, oh, okay, what is it that he can do in this moment, right? But if you're going to end up resenting him for not helping, for not contributing, then what you're doing is you're turning down help. He's literally offering help and you're turning it down. And if you're going to end up resenting him for not helping, all you're doing is setting him up and your marriage up for failure, okay? If you find yourself resistant to telling him what to do because you think he should know, then that's a bigger conversation to have with him at a separate time, not in the heat of the moment, okay? You guys need to talk about what it takes to upkeep the home and take care of the kids and what that involves and set up some systems like checklists or use some apps, do something that works for you guys so he's not constantly asking, what can I do? Although I feel like that's a nice gesture. But if you feel like he's doing that because he's not taking the initiative to think about what he can do, looking around to see what can be done, then set up some systems so that you don't have to deal with that anymore. Okay. I did this with my family because I really, really fucking hate the question, what's for dinner? So on a whiteboard in the kitchen, I now have what's for dinner. So anytime someone asks, I just point to the board and now they have learned to stop asking me. <laughs> okay. So if you are continuously meeting up against resentment or frustration about something, think about, okay, this is a common theme here. It keeps happening. It's a pattern. What can I do? Think about what you can do to solve a bigger issue. Okay. Another thing, let them do it their way. The only time feedback should be given is if he genuinely doesn't know how to do things, okay? If he doesn't know how to do it because he was never taught and never had any interest to learn, you can show him how to do it then. You can share the desired outcome, the criteria. He can watch you do it. He can shadow you. You can walk him through it. The thing about this, though, is that if it bothers you to watch him do it wrong, I'm doing air quotes, okay, wrong, then you've got to let him do it the way he needs to, okay? Leave the room if you need to. Once you have shown him how and he gets it, let him figure out his own way of doing it, okay? Because your way may be the best way in your mind, but it may not be the best way for him. And this can come up because if you're new to asking for support, letting him in, creating opportunities for him to step up as a partner, then chances are you've had a lot more experience doing these things that you're now letting him own, which means that you know what not to do, that you know the faster way to do things, the more efficient way to do things, especially with kids, right? You're like, oh, don't do that because they're going to start yelling or no, they like the pink one instead or they like the one with the stars instead. You know, like kids can get picky, okay? But you've got to let him figure out his own way because he's an entirely different person with entirely different processes and different ways of thinking. So once you've shown him, hey, this is the end goal, this is what we want, out of the whole process, you let him do it. As long as the end goal is met, you let him figure it out on his own, okay? You are not trying to be a micromanager. You are trying to be a supportive partner. And at the end of the day, done is better than what your version of perfect is. It could be perfect for him, but done is better than perfect, okay? Let him stumble, let him learn, let him go through his trial and error to figure out a way that works best for him. Plus, what works best for him may very well not even work for you at all, right? 
because he's a different person. He's a different vibe. He's a different personality. And so what works for him to do with kids could be something that you're like, oh, don't do that. It's not going to work. Okay. So let him learn. Let him figure it out. He is a capable adult that can figure it out on his own. So don't rob him of that opportunity. Okay. The last thing is express gratitude. I want you to sit with this. And I understand if some of you are going to come for me for saying this, okay? Because I have heard it all, (laughs) okay? But seriously, people are motivated by doing things for others and feeling appreciated for their efforts. And of all people, moms, you and I, understand how good it feels to feel like other people appreciate and acknowledge what we're doing. And your husband is no different. Okay, so if you're thinking, well, why should I say thank you? I don't expect him to say thank you for when I do these things. The point is, is you're appreciative of his contribution. You want him to continue doing it, right? And if you want to be acknowledged more, share that with him so he knows, okay? Give him that feedback. Hey, I really love it when I feel like what I do is noticed. What I do is appreciated. Okay, so how good does it feel when he does the things that he's now going to own? Do you feel like you have more energy? Do you feel like you've become more patient, more fun, more flirty, more emotionally available, more available to sex? What are you noticing about yourself because you now have less to do and the labor at home between the house and the kids are divided more fairly according to you and your spouse. How does it feel? Share the positive impact so that he knows the purpose behind what he's doing, so that you don't feel alone, so that you feel supported, so that you have a partner in this thing called life, okay? That's going to feel good to him to feel like, I'm being a really good husband right now. I'm being a really good dad. And don't be afraid to say that, to express it, because you may well be contributing to him actually feeling good about it. And he might even go above and beyond to continue contributing because he feels so good about how he's helping you feel good. And so he's like, okay, what else can I do? He might become more observant. He might ask more. He might notice things better. Okay, so don't write that off. Okay. And as a bonus, with all the benefits that you are reaping from having a partner, from feeling supported, make an effort to spend time with him. Make an effort to doing and becoming that version of you that you said you could become as a result of having more support in the home. So what does that look like? Planning dates, maybe making an effort to talk more that's not related to kids in the house, making an effort to joke around more and keep things light, to flirt more, to have sex, whatever it looks like. You said you wanted this because it would help you become all these things. So do your part too so that he knows, okay, yeah, this purpose actually was something. It wasn't just, oh, she just wants to tell me what to do, is lazy, or wants to manage me, wants to mother me, right? That's not true, okay? So release the control, communicate, give him the opportunity to support you, okay? These are how you can get more support from him at home. You deserve it. You need it. Not to say you can't do it all on your own, but doesn't feel very good when you do it on your own because you end up feeling resentful and that just creates this like negative ripple effect in your home. Okay, that's it for this episode. I hope you took away some very, very tangible, practical tips for you to implement into your marriage because you 1000% deserve to feel supported and you need to feel supported in order for you to feel motivated to connect, to communicate with your husband. And your marriage deserves that. So let your husband know what it is that you need in order for you to feel satisfied in your marriage, okay? So I'm going to pop the link in the show notes to share the workbook to help you feel more confident to have this conversation with him. 
And if you are looking for more clarity around what you need from the marriage as a whole, I'm also going to link the Marriage 360 Review Workbook as well. That's going to help you drill down on, huh, what are some areas that I'm a little bit worried about in my marriage that I need to start bringing up and talk about with my husband so that we can work through these things, okay? Let me know if you have any resistance you might be experiencing listening to these ways that you can start implementing to get more support, okay? If you are encountering any of that, reach out to me, send me a message, let's talk about it. And as usual, if you want support, book a call with me so that we can talk about what challenges you're experiencing and how I can help you get the marriage that you want that you enjoy, okay? Otherwise, I'm gonna catch you back here on Thursday for the next episode of this podcast. All right, take care, bye. That's it for this episode. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. I would so appreciate that. And if you love what I share here, then you're gonna love and wanna join my free private Facebook community that's also called Marriage and Motherhood. I hope to see and connect with you in there. Otherwise, I'll catch you back here for the next episode. Bye.